All right, so we have a lot of different conversions that are out there um, that convert, for example, uh, feet to inches, uh, inches to centimeters, miles to kilometers, all right? And uh, all of them have different values, different relationships. Um, and we're not going to spend any time trying to remember or memorize these. These are all available on the internet for us nowadays. Um, but we want to know how to use them appropriately when the time comes. So um, don't spend your time worrying about memorizing these. They're, they're out there for you to find. But um, let's kind of familiarize, familiarize ourselves with um, some different measurements. Okay, so for example, a, a penny, a penny, we see that it's you know about a centimeter and a half. A uh, human hair, only about 50 micrometers. On here is a, a nano wire, much smaller, right? The island of Oahu, 60 by 50 kilometers, right, in Hawaii. Uh, one meter cubed, okay? So um, these are some different lengths. Here's some different volumes, three liters worth of soda pop. One cubic centimeter, which means a cube with one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, that's defined as a milliliter. So uh, we take a unit of length, cubit, cubits units as well, and we get um, a volume unit. Very good. Um, in the lab, we have some common instruments that we use to make these measurements. We have beakers, flasks, beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks, which aren't really made for making measurements, more for just containing material. But the volumetric flask is very accurate. Graduated cylinders are accurate as well. Not as accurate as volumetric flask or volumetric pipette. When we say something is volumetric, that's uh, probably our, our most accurate um, glassware. And then our burette is also very accurate. Notice how the burette it starts at the top, you fill it up, and you open it on the bottom, and you're delivering solution through it. So it starts up here at zero, and then it counts up as the solution moves down because it's telling you how much has been delivered. So sometimes you're looking at a graduated cylinder. You start from the bottom, zero, and count up. But sometimes you have a burette. You start from the top and count down. Okay, common masses. One cubic centimeter of water, which is one milliliter, is also one gram of water. And that's uh, what we call the density. And we'll talk more about that in the future as well. Okay, so here we have a paper clip, penny, football player, 220 pounds, 100 kilograms, okay? Um, common measurements, Celsius and Fahrenheit. And, you know, some people say, well, if we have Celsius and we have Fahrenheit and the countries can't agree on which one to use, well, then why in the world do we have a third, Kelvin? Well, Celsius and Fahrenheit were both... Uh, People who made thermometers, they were glass blowers. They were good at making thermometers, so that's what they did. They chose different values for their standards, 0 and 100, and 32 and 212. But uh, Kelvin was a scientist who was looking at the volume of different gases at different temperatures. And he developed a, a scientific law that shows that as the temperature of a balloon decreases, its volume decreases. And eventually, the volume will get so low that it will become, well, it doesn't, eventually, at some point, it becomes a liquid because it um, condenses. But what he noticed, what Kel Lord Kelvin noticed, was that these all extrapolate back to one temperature, right? And what he allowed us to kind of realize is that when we think about gas in a balloon, the temperature is really a representation of how much energy those molecules of gas have or that those atoms of gas have and how fast they're moving how much kinetic energy they have so um, when he realized that he realized also that there must be a point where the molecules stop moving but there wouldn't be a point at which you continue to get colder even after you've stopped moving so he identified what we call an absolute zero absolute zero or the temperature at which motion stops because temperature really is a measurement of the motion of molecules okay so uh, there's a neat video out there on YouTube called the race for absolute zero lots of fun you should try to watch it Ooh, I'll do that on the weekend that's a good idea it's a good idea the race for absolute zero okay so um, if we want to go between 
Kelvin and Celsius, which is about the only thing I want you to remember in terms of temperature conversion. And then we have to use 273.15. And um, the only thing that really becomes difficult is remembering, do I add 273 or do I subtract the 273? And if you can always remember that Kelvin developed a new scale based on the fact that there was an absolute zero, meaning that there were no negative numbers, it's just a linear increase from zero up to as high as you wanted to go, right? Then you'll always know that you can't subtract 273 from your Celsius. You have to add it to the Celsius to make sure you always have a positive number. That also shows us that negative 273 degrees Celsius is as cold as anything can ever be on in existence, right? Okay, so 25 degrees Celsius, adding the 273 gives us 298 Kelvin. Now, every measurement has a degree of uncertainty in it. And we said that every number in chemistry represents a measurement of some sort. So because of this, we have to recognize that you can't just, like in math class, write down all the numbers that the calculator gives you. You have to think about how many numbers really represent the accuracy of the measurement that we're dealing with, okay? Um, measurements are all inexact. There's lots of sources of error, right? There's lots of ways to minimize error, error making multiple measurements, uh, using an average, right? These types of things help us um, determine or minimize error, okay? Um, we want to be familiar with two terms, accuracy and precision. Precision is where our cluster of our data points, or in this case, arrows, or in this case, golf balls, are all, are all very close together. So this is high precision, high precision, high precision. This is high precision. This one is low precision, although the accuracy, if the average of this cluster might be right in the middle, right? So it could, it says low accuracy, but you could get a scenario, like I, I tell everybody that I'm a very good golfer. Because whenever I go golfing, I, on average, I hit the ball right in the hole, right? So if when I go golfing, I am looking at the tee, and I hit the ball here, hit it here, hit it here, hit it here, 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 right? Those are all the spots that I hit it. And if you looked at where the average location of hitting the ball is, you would say, oh, it's right in the middle. But that's not an indication that I'm any good at golfing. Right? So just because the average is accurate, it doesn't mean that things are okay with the, the method of measuring your, your, your um, whatever technique you're using or whatever sample you're looking at, right? Okay? So precision and accurate and precision, it's pretty to see them in little clusters. And that's how I remember that precision is the cluster. Accuracy is the actual value, okay? Uh, but you have to find a way to remember precision and accuracy, okay? Now, when we use an instrument to make a measurement, we have to know how many numbers we can write down. So if I look at this bar right here, and I say, all right, it's in between 20 and 30. Uh, I'm going to let you take a look at it, Fred. Take a look and tell me what number you think we can write down. Let's see, there's... There's one, two, there's 10 ticks between there. So 20, 21, 22. So it's above 21. So it's 21 point, maybe four, 21.3 or two, something like that. Okay, good, good. Could I say um, 21.27? Uh, maybe. How about 21.273? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, which one of these do we know for sure? Do we know the t two here? Yeah, we know there's 20s. Do we know the one? Yeah. Because that's right here, right? Right. So do we know it's a little bit above 21? Yeah, we don't know if it's two, though. So that's our first estimate, right? So that's the one that we're not quite positive on. It might be 21.2, 21.3, 21.4, something like that. But there's no reason and no way we can include any extra digits if we know if that is our one that is uncertain, right? It's our estimate. We can keep it, but we can't put on any more. So from looking at a measuring device like this, we would have three significant digits, okay? If I improve my measuring device here, now I have 10 ticks between 21 and 22, then what can I see? 
Oh, it looks like it's 21.3. Yeah, 21.3. 21.3? Is that it? Do I get any more? I don't think so. But look, I can tell that it's above 21.3. Yeah, but you can't tell what it is. No, but I'm allowed to have one what? One estimate? That's right. So if I said 21.3, uh, maybe one, right? Maybe two, something like that. That's my estimate. So now I have four digits or four what we call significant digits, significant digits. So you have to be able to look at your instrument and know how many significant digits you should be able to get based on looking at where the, the graduates are, these marks, and then also remembering that we're going to keep one estimate. Okay. Now, if we're measuring something like eggs, 12 eggs, then that's not, we don't have to worry about uh, that being a significant number. It's just exact. There's a 12. There's not more than 12. And so it can go, um, you can say it has an infinite number of significant digits. Or in the case of like how many inches there are in a foot, 12 is the definition of how many inches there are in a foot. So it's not going to limit your number of significant digits. Okay. So tell me which one of these is right for having the appropriate number of significant digits for this given measurement. Looks like 7.4, no, 7.3, 7.3 something. So uh, C. That's right, C, very good. 7.35 would be okay, 7.34, 7.33 maybe, 7.36, okay? But that one would be, be our estimate, so we're gonna get three significant digits. How about this one? Same thing, 7.35. You sure? Yeah, it's the same, it's a 7, 7.1, 2, 3. Why does it say 6 up here? Uh, is it upside down? No, maybe it's delivering from the top down, right? Like a burette. Oh, so we're looking at 6.72 or something like that. Yeah, maybe 6.62. Oh, yeah, 6.6. .6. There's 6.6 .6 and then a little bit more. All right, good. 6.62. Good. So something we need to pay attention to. Excellent. So when you're looking for a number that's provided to you from another scientist, you have to be able to know how many significant digits there are. All right. And to do that, uh, we have some rules. First of all, if it's not a zero and somebody give it to you as a number, then it has to be a significant digit. As zeros that are between numbers, they're also significant. Zeros to the right are only significant if I have a decimal place there, or they can become significant if I use a decimal place. So sometimes a decimal place becomes a tool to help people indicate, or no, to indicate how many significant digits there are. Okay, zeros to the left are not significant. All right, there was no no, no uh, material there, nothing to measure, so you can't say that those are significant digits. To the right are significant because they're placeholders, not placeholders, they are actual something that, you know, your estimate in this case, you could see that it was around zero, so you estimated zero. Um, zeros to the right without a decimal place, again, no, not not significant digits. All right, so come back to this point in, the, in the, um, the video if you need to, to answer these questions. How many significant digits, Fred? Uh, that's easy. That's three. Very good. Three. How about here? Uh, that's three, two. Mm, no. Why is it four? Oh. oh, yeah, because that zero after the decimal is significant, so everything in between is. That's right. That last one was an estimate. Five is definitely uh, a significance, so four digits. How about this one? Is that four or is that one? Good question, good question. What did we say about the decimal point? Oh yeah, that's just one. Very good, just one. Because these zeros uh, didn't have anything to measure there, so really one was our estimate, right? So that doesn't look like a very, very uh, confident measurement there. What do you think here? Uh, I think I think three, five, and then the zero, zero. That's right. Very good. Okay, so three significant digits. So here's one at home. 
All right, here's one that I want everybody at home to try. So every time I ask a question, you should always stop the video and try to answer it yourself before Big Mouth over there answers it. Hey. I'm just kidding, Fred. I'm glad you're here to answer the questions. Yeah, you should be. You've been doing all sorts of stuff. Yes, thank you for coming. I'm just kidding, right, Fred? Yeah, I know. Okay, so how many significant figures here? Find out. Push pause. All right, tell us, Fred. Uh, I would say sin is not the... Probably just five, I guess. That's right, it is just five. Two in front here, and then all three of these are significant. Okay, so if that zero is there, that means that that was our estimate. They used that zero, and they were trying to tell us that that's what they thought was that last number. Now, what do we do in terms of um, doing calculations with significant figures, right? Calculations with significant figures. And this is very important because when we do calculations for these three values, for example, in our calculator, what we get is this number in the calculator, lots of digits, but we can't just say that all of those digits are significant, therefore we can't express that many numbers in some lab report, okay? Or when we're presenting scientific data, we have to look at our our um, number of significant digits that we had in the three measurements here and decide which one is going to limit the number of significant digits here. Because there was three here, four here, and two there, the least is always going to have to limit our significant digits. So we start at the beginning, one, two. We say that's our last significant digit. So we use the third one there to decide whether we round this three up or down. Four is less than five, so we keep it one, three. So the answer is just 13, and there's two significant digits. Now this is just for multiplication and division. Looking at the number of significant digits in the, the different measurements and choosing the one with the least, that's for multiplication and division. You don't do that for addition and subtraction, okay? So remember that. So here you go. Try to find the correct number of significant digits in this problem here. We're going to multiply these together. All right, Fred, give them a second before you answer. Push pause. Take some time and try to do it yourself. Okay, tell them, Fred, what do you think? Oh, uh, well, uh, let's see. The 12.33 is four significant digits. The 0. 0.00002, that's just one. So our answer is only going to have one. That's right. Only going to have one significant digit. Very good. Um, how, now, addition and subtraction. How do we manage addition and subtraction? Addition and subtraction, you always have to line the numbers up. Don't be lazy. You can't treat it like uh, multiplication and division. Because multiplication and division is pretty easy, you just remember three, four, two, however many significant digits is the least, that's your answer, right? Uh, then people tend to do that in addition and subtraction, but you, you can't do that, all right? You need to line the numbers up, find out where the number of significant digits stops the, the uh, soonest in your number. So here we stopped in the tenths place, and so our answer has to stop in the tenths place, okay? So you always line it up, find the answer, and then stop in the earliest place. All right, do this one at home. Try to find the answer. You thinking about it, Frank? Fred? Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, I've lined up the numbers for us, right? I can do that in my calculator, save some brain cells. 10.33 minus 0 0.034, uh, 10.296. All those values I can write down, 10.296, but I don't keep them all, right? I have to cut it off right here, right, Fred? Yeah, that's right. I was going to say that. And so then the answer would be 10 point. I have to round right here. The six rounds it up, so three zero. Total of four significant digits. Is that what you got, Fred? Well, I didn't really get to do it. You kind of just did it for yourself. All right, but you would have got it, right? Yeah, of course, I would have got it. I can, I can do this. All right, good job, good job. Okay, here's one last one, and uh, I'll give you a chance to try to do this one on your own, but I'm going to give you a hint first. The hint is this. When you do multiplication and division, 
and then you have to do addition and subtraction after that, then you have to round up all your significant digits before you can do the addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's see where you get. All right, I'm going to show you the answer now. So if we go 10 times the 10.88, it's inside the parentheses, that's what we have to do first. The answer is going to be 108.8, .8. very good. But how many significant digits? Because the next thing we're going to do is subtract the 12.2. So we have to gather significant digits right here because we're going from multiplication to subtraction. Okay. So how many significant digits should be in this answer? Well, just three because the 10.0 is three. The 10.88 is four significant digits. Very good. So that's 109. That would be our answer. And now I subtract the... 12.2, sorry about that, rewrite that, 109 minus 12.2, okay, um, I could save some brain cells, 109 minus 12.2, 96.8, 96.8, but what am I going to do in terms of, of rounding my significant digits, where am I going to cut them off at? Uh, at the ones place. That's right, because this is where 109 cuts off. Therefore, my answer is going to be 97, 97. And I had to collect significant digits there because the next thing to do was another division problem. So now I divide by 2.2. .2. Two significant digits in each. So what am I going to have? You're just going to have two significant digits. Very good. Multiplication. You just look at the number of significant digits in each. Okay, very good. Excellent job. Lots of hard work. Fabulous.